Christ's prayer, yeah. in which Christ quotes the Psalms. Okay, okay. And the Psalms talk about the Messiah being protected from harm. All right. That is absolutely true. Everything he said about that Psalm teaching that the Messiah will be protected from harm is absolutely true. But is that the only prophecy in the Psalms about the Messiah? Because Psalm 22 also says that the Messiah will be crucified. It literally describes a crucifixion. And Christ himself said when he taught that the Son of Man might be crucified so that all the scriptures might be fulfilled. That means that those scriptures that talk about him being protected from harm and those scriptures that talk about him being crucified and Christ was protected from harm. How many times did the Jews want to arrest him? How many times did they want to stone him? How many times did he pass through crowds who wanted to chuck him over cliffs or pass through groups that wanted to stone him? The prophecy in, I, in Psalm showing that the Messiah will be protected was fulfilled in the life of Christ. But it is not the pick and choose scriptures that we believe in, that the Dawagandists believe in. We believe in all scripture. And so we agree with those scriptures that say the Messiah will be protected. And we agree with those scriptures that say the Messiah will be crucified, as it does in Isaiah as well. Both scriptures were fulfilled, and that addresses his argument. But I'll ask him again, because he hasn't answered the question. The Quran has an error in it. The Quran thinks that Christians believe in three gods. The Quran says it has no errors. So why does it get the Trinity wrong? It's a good question. And we still haven't heard the answer. No, no. This is the second time of asking. Go on, Bobby. So, which one am I going to respond to? This one or your question? Whichever one you want. But we have to stick to one, Bob. All because... right, respond to the question. Okay, and then I'll come to this one, yeah? <laughs> but which so, one is it? Well, do both then. Okay. So, the Quran is obviously confirming the oneness of God, which is in the Old Testament. Jesus himself confirmed, he said in Matthew 17, verse 3. The Father is the only true God. What does that mean, guys? Come on. Only means only. There's no one beside you. Bob knows English language, right? Even though Jesus didn't spoke English. Clearly stated only. What does only mean? If I say to you, I'm the only person in the speaker's corner, what does it mean? I'm the only one. So if Jesus said, the Father is the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom we have sent, which means God sent him as a servant, this is basic English Christians, come on. You read it, you know it, but you want to twist the scriptures, okay? That's my answer. The Quran says, Kul huwallahu ahad. Allah is one and only. The confirmation of what Jesus said, um, the Father is the only true God, which means Allah is the only true God. Many places in the Quran, it says Allah is one. Allah, there's nothing beside him. Repeat it in Isaiah, in Jeremiah, in Exodus, in the story of Moses, <coughs> Bob wants to go and say, oh, the, the spirit sent by God, which means that's part, of a, that's part of a trinity. No, the spirit means it could be an angel, it could be a prophet of God, uh, it could be somebody, it could be somebody sent by God. So the Bible says anyone sent by God, yeah, is a spirit of God. The Bible says that. It doesn't mean it's talking about the Christian Trinity. Thank Come you, on, Christian. It's all over the Bible. It says. So let me finish my debate with him. Even, I'll talk even to you. I'm a Muslim, but I still watch The Bible says that. Okay. No, no, no person. Well, let me speak, please. Yeah. Nothing so personal. I'm going to come back. Feel free to get in touch. I'm going to come. I'm going to come back to Isaiah 91, yeah? Bob already accepted Isaiah 91. It's about Jesus. Thank you for that. Psalm 91. I appreciate your... Psalm 91. Can I finish, please? Yeah, I didn't interrupt you. Thank you very much. <laughs> we love Bubba. <laughs> we love Bubba. We've, we've spoken before many times. Me and Bubba have a good relationship outside of the corner. 
Christ. Thank you for well, I'm a Come on, come on, Baba. Make your argument, Baba. Go on. Come on. Psalm 91. So, Bob admitted it's about Jesus, and he said it says Jesus will be saved, and it's true. It says no harm will overtake him. Again, Bob says Jesus was crucified and he was beaten up, he was killed. Now, this is a question to all you Christians. How can Jesus be harmed at the same time not harmed? It doesn't make sense. Can Come I on, guys, use your common sense. Can I reply? If God, just give me a minute. Please. Yeah, yeah, go for it. If God says the Messiah will not be harmed, will be protected at all times, yeah, how can he be killed? It's a contradiction. This is why Allah says in the Quran, yeah, um, he wasn't killed, he wasn't crucified. And Psalms 91, thank you, Bob, for admitting that Jesus was in harm. This Psalms 91 is one of the evidences to show that Jesus wasn't crucified. Go and read it and go and check Christian scholars, they will confirm it's about Jesus Christ. Can I reply? Confirm Can I reply? Here. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. the Dawa Gandhi's trick is this. I'll point out something that you believe in, right? And then because you agree with me, therefore I win the entire argument. Ah, okay, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. In the Gospel of Luke, it says, these are Jesus' words. Now he said to them, these are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Everybody say all. all. Does that mean one? No. So all that is written about Jesus. And Psalm 91 is part of the all. Everybody say all. all. Which means that when Christ was protected from harm, as you all know that he was on multiple occasions, that was the fulfillment of Psalm 91, not Isaiah 91. No, wait, wait, no, no, I'm doing a debate. I'll debate you later. No, ladies and gentlemen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. In Isaiah 53, it talks about the suffering servant. In Psalm 22, it talks about the Messiah being crucified. Everybody remember Jesus' words. All scripture. So all scripture is fulfilled together in Christ. He must both be protected from harm, and he was, and he must suffer the crucifixion, and he was, for the forgiveness of sins. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the brother went to um, John 17 to try and teach that Jesus taught the idea of Taweed. Let's actually see if that's what Jesus does. Because quite rightly, Jesus says in Psalm, in John 17, 3, this is eternal life, that he, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and, everybody say, and, and. Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do, now, Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the foundation of the world. In other words, Jesus was not teaching Taweed. Why? Because which, which of Muhammad's teachings teaches that Jesus was with Allah before the foundation of the world, sharing in the glory of Allah? Furthermore, in John chapter 5, we read Jesus' words. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son also gives to whom he wishes, for even the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son. The Son gives life to whom he wills and judges. Is that Islamic Taweed? No. But Jesus goes on, so that all may honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. So let me ask, Baba, how do you honor Allah? 
Do you not worship him? Do you not glorify him? Do you not bow down to him? Well, Jesus is saying that how you honor Allah is how you should honor him. So bow down to him like a good Muslim. Worship him like a good Muslim. Glorify him like a good Muslim. Right. So as you can see, Bob said here that Jesus and the Father had glory and that's got, uh, before the world started, that's got nothing to do with Islam. I disagree with you. In Surah 7, verse 72, it says here, Remember when your Lord brought forth the loins of the children of Adam, their descendants, and oh, had them testified themselves, Thank Am you. I not your Lord? They all replied, Yes, you are. This is talking about pre-existence in souls. That's what Jesus is talking about. Pre-existence. The Quran confirms it here. So all of us, me, you, Bob, and everybody, we all had pre-existence glory with God. That's what Jesus is talking about. Every single one of you, if you don't believe me, Surah 7, 172, is talking about pre-existence glory. This is why we say all, all human beings are born Muslims. Because we have a covenant with God. This is why when people say, oh, how come all of us are born as Muslims? Could I blubber, not blubber. I can't talk to anyone about blubber with someone like that. So Bubba, Bubba is floundering right now. And the reason why Bubba is floundering is because he hasn't taken into account what actually Christianity teaches. So in Philippians chapter 2, it says, Have this mind in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who although he existed in the form of God, Everybody shout, form of God. Did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. Equality with God. Which lines up with what Jesus says in John 17, the glory I had with you before the foundations of the world. But then it goes on. But emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant. Everybody say bond servant. bond servant. So Jesus takes the form of a bond servant, just therefore answering all of his arguments about why does Jesus take the lesser part before the Father? Why? Why? Because he has taken the form of the servant of the Father when he takes on the position of the servant, when he takes on that human nature. Now he said that we Christians believe in three, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Christians do believe in three, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. But that doesn't make a, a belief in three gods. No Christian has ever said they believe in three gods. That's like a Muslim saying that they believe Muhammad was a god. If a Muslim says that they think Muhammad is a god, Every Muslim says automatically they're not a Muslim. Likewise, if you're a Christian and you claim to be a Christian and you say you believe in three gods, every Christian says you're not a Christian. So therefore, by definition, the Quran is wrong when it says that Christians believe in three gods and he has not demonstrated that Christians believe in three gods. I challenge him this. Show me one authoritative statement by one authoritative church or one authoritative statement of scripture or one Christian catechism of any ancient church that teaches that we believe in three gods because the Quran is wrong when it says that we do. But, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Quran saying that Allah is an intercessor to who? That Allah is a sacrificer. To who? That Allah is a ransomer. To who? Ladies and gentlemen, it goes on. It says, bear with us one second. It says in the Quran, Surah 32, Ayah 4, it is Allah who has created the heavens and the earth and all between them in six days. 
Then he established himself on the throne of authority. Ye have none besides him to protect or intercede. Who is Allah interceding to, ladies and gentlemen? This is Allah's description of himself. And more than this, he say, he's given this as a reason why you should believe in his admonition. He's saying, believe what I say because I am an intercessor. So who is Allah interceding to? Taweed is contradicted by the Quran, ladies and gentlemen, because the person that wrote the Quran didn't have logical, consequential thinking. Said one thing in one place and then contradicted it in another place. And the Quran says if it's got contradictions in it, it's not from Allah. Over to you. Yeah. Bob said here, Jesus took the form of God. Again, this is talking about metaphorical said form of man. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Jesus took the form of man, not God. He said the form of man. He said man. Man, okay. He took the form of man because he's a man. That's what he is. He's not God. That's as simple as that. He's a man. Thank you very much, the Bible, for confirming this. All right? It's simple, basic, simple English. He's a man, he's a man, he's not God. Again, the Bible says here, in, uh, in Hosea verse 11, sorry, Hosea chapter 11 verse 19, Hosea chapter 11 verse 19, God says, I will not, I will not execute my burning anger, I will not again destroy Ephraim, for I am God, not a man. Come on guys, the Bible says Jesus is a man, God is not a man. How can that be? It's a contradiction. Come on Christians, use your head. It's a contradiction. You cannot be God and man at the same time. It's not the same. Your Bible says that, not me. Your Bible says that. Even the Quran doesn't even say such statements like this. The Bible is explicit about these things. So Jesus is not God, but a human being like me and you, Bob. He's not God. The next, the next verse here, you said that sure, I haven't shown him um, where, he said to me, show me, I said, show, what I said was, quote me an authoritative church statement that teaches that there is, uh, that Christians believe in three gods. Okay. An I'm authoritative not, church I'm not, statement. I'm not going to go to your church fathers. Why? Because the Bible has authority over the church fathers. The Bible is authority. And everybody knows this. The Bible here, it says, in Isaiah chapter, uh, chapter 45, verse 5. This is Isaiah, by the way. He's bigger than any other Christian scholars. It says, I am the Lord, and there is no other apart from me. There is no God. I will strengthen you through you have no knowledge of me. So God is staying here. He is one alone, one alone. Can I reply? So, no, I will finish because okay, you spoke longer than me. Yeah? So as you can see here, the Christian idea of Trinity yeah, is nowhere to be found in the Christian Bible. Nowhere to be found, okay? And then... He said that in Surah 32, verse 4. Surah 32, verse 4. Allah has created the heavens and the earth and everything in between them in six days. Then he established himself on the throne. You have no protector or intercessor beside him. Yes, you have no protector or intercessor beside Allah, which means no one can intercede beside you, no one can intercede for you except Allah. That's a statement. It's telling you and us the Muslims, everybody, yeah? Yeah? You can't go and intercede to somebody. Only God you can intercede to. It's like me, Bob, yeah? Coming and intercede to you through God. We're not allowed to do that. So that's a statement telling Muslims not to do that. That's what you Christians do. You go and intercede to Jesus instead of God. This is what the Can I reply? Is statement. Yes, go on, bro. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no, sorry, before you go, how long have you been talking now? I don't know. I'll stop when you're ready. Is do you want to do one more round and stop? Yeah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, his argument was to prove again by quoting Isaiah to demonstrate that Christian scriptures believe in one God. We agree. Christian scriptures teach that there is only one God. Him pointing that out proves that I'm right because the Quran says that we believe in three gods. 
and he has not demonstrated anywhere by any source or authority that we Christians believe in three gods. On the contrary, he's helped me to demonstrate that Christians believe in one God by showing verse after verse after verse that teaches monotheism. But the Bible teaches that the one God is the Father, is the Son, and is the Holy Spirit. Let me just give you an example. In Titus, it reads, Titus chapter 2, Looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Christ Jesus. So the Bible teaches that Christ Jesus is God and Saviour. So therefore we have one God, and the Father is that God, and the Son is that God, and the Holy Spirit is that God, ladies and gentlemen. That's Trinity, that is not a belief in three gods. So the Quran is wrong when it says we believe in three gods, and therefore is in error, and he hasn't defended against that critique. Now, he went on to say, he went on to admit that Allah is an intercessor. Wait a second. If you are an intercessor, someone is above you. Because an intercessor is one who intercedes between party A and party B. So who is bigger than Allah that he needs to intercede? Who is bigger than Allah that he needs to ransom with a great sacrifice? Who is bigger than Allah that he needs to protect? Nobody. But Allah is describing himself as an intercessor. So in other words, he's admitting that someone is above him. This is shirk. Islam teaches shirk. It says that in the Quran, it says when a decision is made by Allah and his messenger. Wait a minute. Who's making the decision? Allah and his messenger. A partnership. What is shirk? Partnership. The very definition of shirk. And so, when the decision is made by Allah and his messenger, and the Muslims shouldn't argue against it, Allah is saying that Muhammad is a partner in the decision that we have made. And if it's a decision that we have made, then Allah has a partner in the decision. And that is shirk in the Quran. And the Quran says if it's from any other than Allah, I would find contradictions. I'd say that's a pretty kick-ass contradiction. Bob, Bob said Christians don't believe in three gods, they only believe in one. I've never seen a Christian that says I only believe in one God. They always say, no, no, hang on, you say three in You've one. Seen now. You've seen you now. say three in one. All these why people you, raising their hands. Why do you always put three there? Why not only say one? Why always three in one? Because the three involves in it, that's why. <laughs> and then it says here, Bob, you said here, um, you said in Surah, uh, sorry, it's the Quran says, obey Allah and his messenger. That's true. If Allah is the one that sent the Prophet, which he did, yeah, the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, he is a, a, what you call, somebody sent to guide people. So he is like a mediator to people. If God sends him, yeah, you must listen to him because God is the one that sent him. It's like me sending you, Bob, go and teach people about something, yeah. What does that mean? They have to listen to you as well, not just me. They have to listen to you. That's what Allah says. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger, which means they're working together. This is why Christians got the Bible confused. They got the, the Jesus being a prophet, they got it confused because they think, yeah, Jesus representing God, that means that they are equal in partnership. No. Jesus was sent by God. Alongside the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the angel Gabriel. It's not the, uh, what you call to be God. So they all work together, Allah, the Holy Spirit and Jesus. The same Allah and Muhammad and, and Jibreel, the Holy Spirit. They all work together, okay? So that they work together and be one. 
That's why Jesus says in the Bible, I and the Father are one. I and the disciples are one. Can one I, in purpose. Can I reply? Not like every other thing like you guys are claiming. Can I reply? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the passage that I'm talking about. Surah 33, Ayah 56. It is not fitting for a believer, man or woman, when a matter has been decided by Allah and his messenger. And his messenger. A decision has been made jointly by both. That means that on that decision, Allah has a partner. That is shirk. That is shirk in the heart of your Quran, O Muslims. Your Quran is teaching shirk. And yet you say shirk is the worst of all sins. And what was the decision about? It was about, it was about marrying Muhammad's first cousin, the wife of his adopted son. Now, Muslims don't believe in forced marriages, which means that Muhammad must have agreed to the decision, which means that Allah does have a partner in the decision, which means that that is shirk in the Quran. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he has still not demonstrated anywhere that Christians believe in three gods. And when he said, I've never seen a Christian who believes in one God, immediately we all stuck up our hands. So now he can't say that to the next person he debates because he has seen Christians say they believe in one God. Saying that the Father is God and the Son is God and the Holy Spirit is God is not our invention. It says it in the Bible, clearly, in black and white. The Father is the only true God. Jesus is the great God and Saviour. You have not lied to men, but to God when speaking about the Holy Spirit. That means, with all the verses he quoted from Isaiah, there is only one God, and the Father is that God, and the Son is that God, and the Holy Spirit is that God. And I want to thank Bubba for chucking Zakir Naik and Ahmed Didat and Shakir Ali and all Shabir Ali under the bus who have all tried to argue that the Holy Spirit is a reference to Muhammad because Bubba has just said it's not a reference to Muhammad it's a reference to the angel Gabriel which means he's saying Zakir Naik is wrong Ahmadida is wrong, Shabia Ali is wrong, and virtually all the Dawagandists in this park are wrong. So let's give a big round of applause for Bubba for chucking that away. You're totally right. But, ladies and gentlemen, in Psalm 51, David says when addressing God, do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. And in Acts, the apostles say, you have not lied to men, but to God when speaking about the Holy Spirit. So the Bible is very clear that the Holy Spirit is God, ladies and gentlemen. But it's not the same person. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the, the, the Father. And so all the Unitarians in this park are heretics who deny the Holy Trinity, and they are not Christians, ladies and gentlemen. Can I respond now, Bob? Yeah, go on. Okay, now he said, that again, he says, uh, obey Allah and the Messenger, which means, that's shirk. Doesn't say that. That's not what it said. What did you say then? It says, when a matter has been decided okay, yeah. by Allah and his Messenger. Okay. That means, yeah, whatever Allah reveals to him, whatever Allah tells him, yeah, people have to listen to him, Bob. That's not what it says. Yeah, but when a matter has been decided, how does the prophet know? Because Allah reveals it to who, him. Who, according to the Quran, no. who decides Can it? I... Yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on. It's just that, I just, I just want to, I'm sorry, you're right, you're right, you're quite right. Go on, Bubba, go on, go on. I'll shut up. Only person to say to Bob, please don't interrupt me. He does it to other people except me. <laughs> but Bubba doesn't interrupt me, so he's got me banged to rights. He's got me banged to rights. Go on, Bubba. Go on. Anyway, yeah. So I've got, I've got the verse wrong, by the way. So, right. yeah. so as you can see, the matter 
The Prophet has to get the matter from who? From Allah. That's why they work together. It's like you working in a hospital, yeah, and or at workplace, and your manager yeah, gives you information to, to do something. Where do you get it from? Your manager is the one telling you. So the matter is not being decided by both of you. It's your manager telling you, can you do this for me? And, and then you do it. So you're working together. But it doesn't mean the information is from the workers. The manager is the one that told them to do it. They're working together. That's why God sends prophets and messengers. That's why for them to come and represent God's message, Bob. You should know this, Bob. It's common sense. God sent Noah, Abraham, Moses to represent people about God. But it doesn't mean they came up by themselves or they got the information together without working together. It means God is the one telling them. I'm glad I've said that to you. Thank you very much. So now, the other ones we said, Ahmad Didad said, the Holy Spirit is the Prophet Muhammad. That's not true. Ahmad Didad, I've watched his video. He said the Holy Spirit is the angel Gabriel. It's on video. I'll show it to you afterwards, yeah, where he said that. And the Quran confirms this. The Quran confirms this. It says uh, in Surah 16, 102, it says, Say Muhammad, the Holy Spirit has brought you down from your Lord. What is the what did the Holy Spirit brought down? The Holy Quran. The Holy Spirit is the angel Gabriel. He brought down the Quran. God knows this. That's why I said to you, in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is either the angel Gabriel or anybody that represents God. In this context here, it's talking about the angel Gabriel, Bob. The Quran says it. You don't believe me? Here. You can see with your own eyes. Can I reply? Let me finish my point, yeah? The Holy Spirit brought it down. Allah is the one that sent the angel Gabriel. So the Holy Spirit is not Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's the angel Gabriel. Who brought down the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It's the angel Gabriel. Can I reply? Thank you, yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I am not arguing that Muslims don't believe that the angel Gabriel is the Holy Spirit. Thank you. I've never made that argument, so he's, he's attacked me on something I've not argued. I pointed out to him that the Bible teaches the Holy Spirit is God. He is the one who is arguing that the Holy Spirit is the angel Gabriel in the Bible, so it's incumbent upon him to show how the angel Gabriel is the Holy Spirit in the Bible. The Bible Not the Bible by referring to what the Quran the teaches, because we don't care what the Quran teaches about the Holy Spirit. We don't believe in the Quran, but Muslims should agree and should care about what the Quran teaches about Muhammad. Here's what it teaches about Muhammad. It teaches that when a matter has been decided by Allah and his messenger, that is not the same as what Bubba said. Bubba said that what's been decided is by Allah and he just conveys the information to Muhammad. That's not what the Quran says. The Quran says, don't chuck things, you moron. Don't, don't chuck things, thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just showing shirk in your Quran. Now, let me go on. What are you chucking for? What are you chucking for? No one's your dimmy, you clown. No one, come make me a dimmy. Make me a dimmy, you Islamist dog. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of vermin that we need to stand up against. The kind of vermin that want to persecute Christians. Right. For my sake, for my sake, please. For Bubba's sake, who is a good Muslim, I'm going to ignore the Islamist dog. Because Bubba proves that not every Muslim is an Islamist. So, let's continue talking about shirking the Quran. So, in the Quran, Allah says that a decision is made by him and Muhammad, ladies and gentlemen. That's what Allah says. That is shirk. Because Allah is in partnership with Muhammad in making a decision, ladies and gentlemen. Notice he's triggered, but he's got no answers. Let's go on. Because the Quran also says this. This is Allah speaking to Muhammad. Behold, thou didst say to one who had received the grace of Allah and the favor, retain thy wife and fear Allah. But thou 
didst hide in thy heart that which Allah was about to make manifest, thou didst fear the people. Allah is accusing Muhammad of fearing the people more than Muhammad fears Allah. And that is a sin according to Sharia law. So Allah is testifying that Muhammad committed shirk by fearing the people more than he feared Allah. Because Muhammad had known that Allah was going to divorce the marriage of his adopted son so that he could marry his adopted son's wife, who was his first cousin. And Allah said, because you hid it, you feared the people more than me. That is shirk. That is one of the great sins of Islam, to fear other than Allah. And look, Allah is accusing Muhammad, not me. So ladies and gentlemen, according to the Quran, Allah is a, Muhammad is a false prophet. According to the Quran, Allah has partners. According to the Quran, ladies and gentlemen, we Christians believe in three gods and he hasn't yet shown one scrap of evidence that we Christians believe in three gods. This debate is coming to an end. Islam is dying on its feet, ladies and gentlemen. You should do like this brother and leave Islam. He's leaving Islam and all of you should leave Islam as well, ladies and gentlemen. Come home to the Christian faith where we worship the one and only God and where we are serving the Lord God by following in the example of his Messiah in establishing the kingdom of God on earth by sacrificing our souls and bodies to bring about his kingdom. Yeah, go on. And then we'll stop. Yeah, it's still an hour, isn't it? I like this, I like this, I love like this. He's coming with one man, he's a criminal racist. He said, he said the Prophet Muhammad, and we just should, yeah? For him and Allah, walking together, and people listening to them, yeah? But in Shura 59 verse 7, it says, whatever the messenger gives you, take it. Whatever he, he forbids you from, leave it. And fear Allah, surely Allah is severe in punishment. Again, it's confirming that what I said earlier, which is whatever Allah gives the Prophet, you have to listen to the Prophet Because the Prophet he doesn't do anything according to by himself. Because in one of the Quran verses, it says, your Prophet does not speak of his own. Which means Allah is the one telling him whatever he speaks. And I'm sure you're aware of that verse, Bob. Okay? So whatever the Prophet ﷺ did, it is Allah is telling him to do that. Allah is the one telling him to do this. Alright? Sometimes it could be through the angel, it could be a dream, or it could be inspiration directly like this. Okay? And then you also said the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he committed shirk to fearing people. Now, the Prophet Muhammad in Pizviv is a human being. We fear. Human beings fear. Even Moses, the prophet of God, when, when God said to him, go to the Pharaoh, he said to God, I'm scared they're going to kill me. He, I'm scared they're going to kill me. So, prophets of God, yes, they're prophets, but they're human beings. They have feelings. They can be scared. They can be happy. They can be angry. Just like me and you, Bob. There's no difference between me and you with the prophets of God. So, fearing, yeah, that's natural for human beings. Okay? So, uh, fearing because he thought people would be angry, which people were angry. But people didn't know in Islam you can marry your adopted ex-wife. It's okay in Islam, it's, it's halal. You can do that. It's not forbidden. So this is why people were actually uh, angry with him because they didn't know the law. So God confirmed the law and he said, yes, you can marry your adopted ex-partners because they're not your biological children. You can marry them. In Islam, it's allowed. So, uh, what's the other point you said? Uh, we're going to finish, so. Yeah.
So yeah, so I want to let everybody know before I finish. Can I summarize and then you can summarize as well? Yeah, okay. Do you want to summarize or should I start? I think I started, so you should have the last word. <laughs> right, guys. So, so, so let, let me finish. <laughs> Firstly, Bubba's a good guy. We like Bubba. Yeah, we love him. Right, he's not like the Islamist dog that started chucking things over there. <laughs> but I want to give Bubba a gift to show that I love Bubba. Yeah. Right? Have you got a Bible, Bubba? I have. You have? Okay, so this is a, a, a gospel, gospel of Mark, and it's full of academic notes to help with your study of the faith. Ah, okay, so okay. this is my gift to you uh, to help you learn more about the Christian faith. Uh, it's not just the Bible, it's full of academic study, which will help you know that you're wrong when you say that the Gospels don't teach Christ was crucified or that Jesus was God. Can I, can I respond? Wait, wait, no, wait, I'm just, would you want the gift or not? I'm going to kindly say no. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, people that don't want to learn are people that repeat a script. And what you've heard here is a script, an Islamic script that criticizes the Christian faith. In summary, Baba was wrong to accuse Christians of believing in three gods. He did so without providing any evidence. That claim falters, which means that my claim that the Quran has an error in it because it says Christians believe in three gods stands because it hasn't been proven wrong. Which means that the auxiliary point that the Quran has errors in it stands. Which means that the auxiliary point that the Quran has no contradictions in it, but it does because it claims to have no errors in, but it does, stands. Which means that three of my reasons for rejecting Islam have not been defeated in argument. But all of Bubba's claims have. All of them have. He has misunderstood the Trinity. He has misunderstood the prophecies about Christ in the Psalms and Moses and in the prophets that talk about both him receiving divine protection and him being crucified. He has not demonstrated how it isn't sure to say that Allah ransoms to another, intercedes to another, sacrifices to another protects against another. Ladies and gentlemen, the Quran teaches that Allah has a partner in Muhammad. They make joint decisions together and says Muhammad feared the people more than he feared Allah because he hid from the people what he knew Allah was going to reveal. That's shirk, ladies and gentlemen. That's sin in Islam. Baba has not defended any of his points he has just repeated arguments without demonstrations. And that, ladies and gentlemen, I think conclusively proves why I'm right to reject Islam and why that brother who is there to reject Islam and why all of you should reject Islam as well and come to know more about the Christian faith. Don't be like Bubba. Pick up a gospel and read it. God bless. Can I go my conclusion? Yeah, go on, yeah. your conclusion. So I want to say, uh, I'm with Bob. Thank you everybody for listening. That's a, I think I've made some good points. And God knows this himself. Old Testament nowhere to be found, okay? And I also want to say, I've defended all the arguments about the world, but he doesn't accept it, but I've defended it. So all of you who are watching, please go and watch it again. And I also want to say that all the Christians, please come to the religion of Jesus, which is Islam. The only true religion. All of them, from Adam, to Muhammad, peace be upon them, they all worship one God alone without uh, associating partners with. So Bob, as a Christian today, I'm going to invite you to the religion of Jesus, Moses, Muhammad. Can you please reject the religion you have, which is completely false, I'm not insulting you, it's completely false, all right? Come to the religion of Jesus, which is Islam, okay? It's not a question, it's not a question, I'm just stating, yeah? And I want to also say to the Christians, yeah, yeah. whatever I said in this place, 
Please do not take it out. Leave everything I said, me and Bob, yeah, yeah, yeah. and put it on social media. Yeah, Everybody see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But some that. of the Christians and some Muslims, I'm going to be honest, they take shot. out the good points the opponent has and leave out the bad things the opponent has. I don't believe I had any, any bad points here. Leave every single thing there and leave every single thing on my part and God's part. Right. Okay? Thank you very much, Baba. I want all Christians you to look come after to Islam. Yourself. Every single one of you, you leave your religion and come to the thank religion you, thank of Jesus. Thank you very much. Thank God bless you all. You take care, Baba. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Any questions? Going once. I've got a question for you, Bob. Early on, you were talking about Jesus praying. Uh, and Jesus, and this is to do with God, Jesus being God, not being God. Who was Jesus praying to? If Jesus and God were the same thing, who was Jesus praying to? So the question is, who was Jesus praying to when he was praying to the Father? The answer is he was praying to the Father. Why? Because the Son, when he becomes a man, he doesn't become an atheist, does he? Not at all. The perfect Israelite doesn't become an Israelite and suddenly stop believing in God, does he? No. So when the, and the son, do you want to debate, sir? Right, well, don't interrupt the answer to the question then. So, no, bro, I'll come and debate you if you want, or you can listen to the answer to the question. Right, stop interrupting. So, ladies and gentlemen, the answer to his question is really easy. The son prays to the father. Why? Because the son always was in communion with the Father before the foundation of the world. But now he continues that communion as a man because he has become a man. And so he prays to the Father. Does that mean that he is not God? No. Why? Why? Because we aren't saying that the Son and the Father are the same person. We're saying that the Son and the Father are the same essence the same species. We're not the same persons, but we are all human, which means that we are all sharers in the same species. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit uniquely are the three persons that possess divinity. And that divinity is one and the same, ladies and gentlemen at the same time, at the same moment. And that is why the Father, can, the Son can pray to the Father and the Father can glorify the Son. They're not the same person, but they are the same God. Next question. Going once. Going twice. Go on. Why do Muslims struggle? About uh, with God, putting on human living tissue. Always saying, how can God? Yeah. How can God? How can? So, ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. Muslims have an incarnational theology within their religion. Let me show you what it looks like. Here it is. Muslims tell you that this is the Word of God. And they say that the Word of God is eternal. And that it is divine and that it is existed before creation and yet here I am holding it in my hand lifting it up lowering it down moving it to the right moving it to the left I've underlined it I've written notes upon it but Muslims will say that I have not done that to the word the divine word of God but to the paper and the ink we Christians teach that Christ became flesh. And when he became flesh, he was born like a man, ate like a man, slept like a man, died like a man, was risen again like a man. He was, all of these things happened because he took on flesh. It is exactly the same idea. The reason why they struggle with that idea is because of cognitive dissonance. They affirm it in one setting, but then deny its possibility in the other. And that is the very example of what cognitive dissonance is. Next question. 
Going once. Go on. Christians should not believe in superstitions. You don't get bad luck if you walk under a ladder. You don't get bad luck if a black cat walks in front of you. The stars don't control your fate. Where the moon is in the sky does nothing to you. These are superstitions. And Christians should reject superstitions because God alone is the one who has all power and authority and all dominion and all might and all glory. Next question. Is it okay to play over a handkerchief and use that as a talisman? Is that, or is that superstition? So, ladies and gentlemen, Paul touched handkerchiefs that were then taken to heal the sick. And in the scriptures, it teaches, he's putting it away because he's got the verse he was going to read. <laughs> also, 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 the bones of the prophets raise the dead in the Old Testament. And so we Christians believe that artifacts can contain power. The Ark of the Covenant led to the death of one who touched it and who was unclean. The robe of Christ was a source of healing for the woman who touched it. Why? Why? Because these things draw their power from God's spirit, God's power, God's energy. It demonstrates that God's power and energy can exist in objects and that they can communicate God's grace and power to us. So yes, it is okay for what we call relics to be a source of healing and a source of redemption, not redemption, but a source of making us whole, healing us, a source of God's grace. Final question. Final question. Going once, let someone else ask a question. You're frightening my questions, Bob. Sorry? You're running away from me. But there's one thing that I'm always for you to try to focus on the parents, right? Is that, you know, the Lamas books that they get altered, even like the prayers that you say, that I've learned since the back of the yeah. community, they've changed. Yep. And like, when Joyce and Mama's friends, they always say, at one point, they always put to me, yeah, is that, oh, your books have been altered. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. the sister has said that she feels it causes her doubt okay. when the prayers of the mass are changed and Muslims point out well our religion has stayed the same this causes a doubt this is exactly why apologetics needs to be taught in the churches because this is such a little issue no offense sister I don't mean to I'm not in any way belittling you but this is such a basic question your church should equip you to be able to address this question yourself let's be clear the church has the right and is sanctioned by Christ when he says that I give to you the keys and what you loose on earth is loosed in heaven and what you bind on earth you bind in heaven. So when the church writes its own prayers as it does, it has the authority to do so from Christ. And when it changes those prayers, it has the authority to do so from Christ. That's the Islamist dog. <laughs> and this is how we Christians will be treated if we don't stand up to Islamist dogs like that. Ladies and gentlemen, the church has the authority to change its prayers and compose its own prayers. When you pray to God, do you not pray in your own words? There you go. You're doing it from the authority of Christ. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's a basic thing that you should have known because that means the church can change the mass. It's okay. The church has that right. But, ladies and gentlemen, were the Muslims telling the sister the truth when they said that Islam has not changed? They lied to her. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hadith say that the Quran of the time of Muhammad was bigger than the Quran that we find today. Muslims didn't have 
legal schools called madhabs at the time of Muhammad. No way. They didn't have hadiths at the time of Muhammad. There's nothing in the Quran that says write down hadiths. No way. There's, there was no science of hadiths taught by Muhammad. All of these in things were invented after Muhammad. They didn't tell her that Muslims disagree about how you pray. Oh no! If you compare how the Shia pray to how the Sunni pray, they're not the same, ladies and gentlemen. They don't pray in the same way. They don't even pray the same number of times, ladies and gentlemen. No, they don't. But they didn't tell her that because the Dawah Gandhists are looking for vulnerable Christians to lie to them about their own faith and about your faith. And that's why as Christians we should learn apologetics. And that's why as Christians we should learn to defend our faith. And that's why as Christians it is absolutely right that we can criticize Islam. And sister, if you want to talk more about it, get in touch with me. Okay, for anybody who wants to, I'm going to go for a coffee. If you want to join me for a coffee, you're more than welcome to come with me. So, peace be with you. God bless you all. There you go. Which microphone's yours?